I just got arrested for three felony possessions with intent. Um, I really didn't know how I was gonna pay the bond off or pay for a lawyer. Or, so my thinking, you know, being where I was at in my life, um, I'm gonna go sell drugs again. And uh, you know, I just didn't know how I'd be able to get away from it. I prayed. Um, and I hadn't prayed when I was using because like you just I just didn't, you know. And I'm laid in the bed and I prayed and I said, God, I know this is not how my life is supposed to be. Help me get my life straight. It was literally like a couple of days later is when the door got kicked in. And all of the fun stopped and we were in jail. What does it mean then uh, to do ministry that fixes the root of the problem and not just the surface of the problem? Because at the end of the day, what I realized was that financial resources are relatively easy to help people out with, but some of these other issues coming out of an abusive relationship, unemployment, uh, addiction, uh, these things are hard and they don't get fixed right away. They don't get fixed because you help somebody cover rent for the month or they don't get fixed because you keep their water turned on. Unfortunately, it seems that a lot of the people who come to us either have drugs or alcohol problems. Uh, you see people with tattoos, you see people who are homeless. Uh, we have one family who came who were living in their, in their truck with two children. And so, uh, one of the great gifts that God has given this church is a great spirit of hospitality and mercy. And I thought if we could get these people to experience the love of Christ, the radical love of God, through the, the human beings that make up the fabric of this church, then we can begin the walk down the long road to restoration, recovery, uh, and the fullness of, of experiencing the gospel. There is a process. They fill out an application. Uh, they come to worship in Sunday school with us. They meet with our, our Helping Hands team. It hit me one day, I want to go to church, you know? So I contacted somebody that I knew in the church and asked for rides back and forth to church because we didn't have a car. And people from the church would come and get us and take us to church and everything, and we would come high, and everybody knew it. We're here to, to help them. We're not here to judge them in any way. And if, and if they hear that, uh, if they don't hear anything else, I want them to hear that when we go into these meetings. We're not here to judge you. We're here to help you and do what we can. It takes a lot of uh, thought to come to a decision as to whether it's they need money or rehab or um, they're overcoming grief, and uh, it's not always easy. But we sat down in um, Pastor Scott's office and talked about it you know, told him how I felt, told, you know, Shirley how I felt, and the Helping Hands Committee, and um, they decided to help us. And when folks walk with us and they allow us to be in those kind of relationships with them, uh, it is fascinating to see um, the fabric of the community of this church uh, begin to bless people in these deeper ways. I want to satisfy God now, you know, and I hope that my kids see that in me and they want to do the same thing one day. It was clear that this ministry needed to be um, a ministry to uh, the people in our neighborhood, right? Uh, Acts 1-8 says that we receive the Holy Spirit and it will be a spirit of power. And with that power, we are to do ministry and outreach in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And Jerusalem ministry, as we call it here at the church, is just neighborhood ministry. So the area we're going to right now is called Virginia City. And Virginia City is just north of the interstate. Ocean Springs is an affluent community. And it's been eye-opening for me to see how much poverty there actually is. What if Virginia City could change? Yeah. I, if, I keep that in my head yeah, all the time, too. And, and I think the gospel does, right? The gospel is of Jesus Christ is the thing that redeems brokenness. And what if we could do it? On Sundays, we invite people to come and be a part of us. We meet them outside to, to come into the church together uh, so that they don't have to sit alone and uh, then we bring them over for the Sunday school class. 
and we start out with praise and with uh, prayer requests and it gives us a time to be able to tell our stories about what God has done in our life and about what uh, we need God to do in our lives. And so that has been a, a moving ministry. It started with just a few from our congregation who wanted to come alongside to help uh, to now we have between 40 and 45 people who come to be with us. It was a number of months ago, um, uh, a, a gentleman at this church who's been a member here twice as long as I've been alive, grew up in this church, pulled me aside um, and he said, Scott, you need to know something. He said, this is not the church I grew up in. And I mean that in a good way. And that changes from an all white, fairly all affluent, small group of people to today, at least in the Presbyterian faith in Mississippi, a big church with a very diverse demographic. I've seen God at work so many times in the people that we have seen and that come back and, um, and become a vital part of this church. And I believe that even those who are here one Sunday for church and Sunday school are being ministered to and a seed is being sown in their lives. And that's, that always gives me hope that they're hearing the gospel. I can't tell you why God has put this intense desire in my heart to share Christ with other people, but He did. So all that we do uh, in the Helping Hands ministry, the clothing, the food, the writing of checks, is always to share Christ with people in hopes that they can come to know Him as Lord and Savior. So what we've seen is the people we started helping are now helping others. And it's just an amazing opportunity that we've been able to have to be able to reach out in a way that had never been done before. We wanted to try to help other people. We wanted to try to give back what had been given to us. And we still do every day. But part of that was we knew that there were a lot of young people in the church coming through the Helping Hands program. And um, in hopes that they would come to our house. And because I would see them come to church and I'm like, I'm like you, you know? So we decided to have it a vital group at our house, a Bible study. We could get to know them, they could get to know us and see our lives and see how we live. You know, we're not perfect. We began the Helping Hands ministry with the earnest desire to allow God to use this body of His here at First Presbyterian Church to be one of the catalysts for change in people's lives. What we've seen happen, uh, though, is that God has not only used this church to affect real and lasting change in people's lives, but God has used those people's lives to affect real and lasting change in the life of the church. When you have somebody in your home, it's almost like, here I am, you know, here's me and all of my, you know, here's me and my mess, you know, that means I love you, you know. I want, I want you to be a part, you know, you are a part of us, please come to my house, you know. And we were, we had gotten to the point where we were ready for that, where, um, We were ready to have family over, you know, to do other things, to do more. We wanted more. And that's been one of the great surprises of it all, uh, is that uh, as we began to do this ministry in order to work on others. Uh, but God, through this ministry, has continued to work uh, and grow uh, us. And that's, you know, ultimately, I think, that's the gospel, right? It's, it's a centrifugal force. It moves out. Uh, it is a go into all the world. And whereas the broken have been coming to us, our hope is really to figure out a way that we can further uh, go into, uh, infiltrate, and bless these communities with the hope of Christ. Uh, and that's a big challenge, and I don't know if we'll be any good at it, but I'm sure hoping that, uh, that God will give us some clarity for this next part of, of, of who we are as a church.